Okay, uh, another five questions. This time, um, looking at basically substitution. So we're looking at it from a trial and improvement point of view, and a formula, a uh, formulae point of view. Okay. Now this trial and improvement one usually almost certainly comes up on the calculator paper, and you have to follow a set method to do it. So um, let's look at the first one. Let's see if we can follow the set method. Well, it's asking us to solve x cubed plus two x equals uh, equals fifty. And it tells us the answer lies between 3 and 4. So if you put 3 in, 3 cubed plus 2 lots of 3 is 33. That's clearly too small. If you put in uh, 4, which is the next one here, 4 cubed is 64 plus your 2 lots of 4, which is 8, comes out 72. That's clearly too big. Now what you've made here is you've sandwiched the answer between 3 and 4. You've sandwiched the answer there, so we know we've got the answer somewhere between. Now, I, I like the sandwich analogy because it, it helps us to understand what's going on. So, once you've made a sandwich, if you wrap it up, and I'm using cling film here, so wiggly line, just to tell me to remind me that uh, I need to try numbers. Uh, and I need to try numbers between three and four. Okay, so I make one sandwich, and I've got to try exactly. 3.5. So if I try exactly 3.5, I've got to tap that into my calculator. I get 3.5 cubed, which is equal to 42.875. I'm going to add on two lots of 3.5, which is 7, which comes out as 49.875. Now that's too small. So if the answer is too small, I've got to go one step at a time. Now, if I'm using this bread sandwich analogy, I can only go one step. I don't jump to 3.75 or anything. I go one slice of bread at a time. So I jump to 3.6. So just putting the whole answer in, putting it all into my calculator, I forgot a scientific one or working it out. Um, if I put that in, I get the actual answer of 53.856. And I'll leave you to work out, check you can do that. Now that comes out as too big. So again, I've made a second sandwich, which is good. So I now know the answer somewhere between 3.5, 3.6. So again, if I wrap this sandwich up in cling film, um, I want to find the answer to one decimal place, which I've got two answers to one decimal place, and I need to find which one of these two answers. Now some people pick the, the closest one, that's not always the best method. What you've got to do is you've got to try number exactly in between that. So you've got to try 3.55 as a little tester. Now I think of this as sneaking to the fridge and like sneaking a little bit of ham or cheese or turkey or something to see if you're still hungry. So you made two sandwiches and you had them and then you sneak to the fridge and see if you you still want another one, which you probably won't because most people only eat two. So if we try that 3.55 cubed plus two times 3.55, tap that into our calculator, we get the answer 51.5. 838875 and that comes out as too big. Now we don't need to go any further than this because we only want the answer to one decimal place. So I know the middle of the answers between these two, I know the middle 3.55 is still too big. So that means anything below that is going to round down to 3.5. So I know that the answer is 3.5 to one decimal place. Say so that again. So you made one sandwich of whole numbers, you made a sandwich between decimal places, and then you, you tried exactly in between. You found out the answer in between was too big, which means anything above this, anything between these two answers, is all going to be too big, so the answer must be to one decimal place, must round to that. The other way I like to think of it is an odd one out. Of your last sandwich here, and the little tester, you see you've got a big, a big, and a small answer. So we always go with the odd one out. Big, big, small, so our answer must be 3.5 to one decimal place. Okay, let's have a look at another one, but we've got to be a bit careful about this bit. Now it's really important we remember that we've got to do the cubing first and then halve it. So let's just test this. And it should be you, importantly you should try this on your calculators to check you get the same number as me. So five cubed is 125, which if I halve it comes out as 62.5. It's important I cube it first, then halve it. Take away 5, 
comes out as 57.5 which compared to my answer of 90 which I want at the top is too small so let's go for 6 and we know the answer is between 5 and 6 because it tells us so 6 cubed is 216 you've got to half it afterwards is 108 minus your 6 gives you 102 which is too big done what we wanted we've created a sandwich sandwich the answer keep the sandwich fresh wrap it up in cling film we've got to try exactly between these so 5.5 .5 cubed first divided by 2 and then minus 5.5 .5. gives you an answer of 77 check you get it on your calculator the same as I have you might have to do it in steps if you've got a simple calculator 77.6875 which is too small only one step at a time so I have to go up to 5.6 5.6 cubed divided by 2 minus 5.6 I come up as 82.208. It's still too small, but we're working our way up to 90. One step at a time only. You can't jump or miss anything, so you've got to go one step at a time. 5.7 cubed equals that, divided by 2 equals that, minus 5.7, gets us to 86.8. 8965. Still too small, but we're pretty much there. Hopefully, we're there with this one. 5.8. 5.8 cubed divided by 2 minus 5.8. 91.756. Oops. 7.5. And then that comes out too big. What I've done is I've sandwiched the answer between 5.7 and 5.8. So I'm just going to draw a line underneath it, wrap it up in cling film that looks more like tin foil, but that's okay. Um, and I know the answer is between that. I have to try the next one. I have to go to two decimal places. I have to go 5.75 to try and find out which one of these two is the right answer. 5.75 cubed, half the answer, minus 5.75, 89, it's a long one, 89.3046875, just too small. So now I need to select out of my 5.7 and my 5.8, my second sandwich, I need to find out which one I want. For the small answer and the small answer, which means it must be between 5.75 and 5.8. Now, for one decimal place, that all rounds to 5.8, to one decimal place. Or, if I look at the last three answers I've got, my sandwich and my check, small, small, big. This is the odd one out, so this must be the odd one out and the answer, okay? It's really important you go back and you try this method and you understand. If you don't do this method, you won't get all the marks in the exam. It's really important. Okay, let's look at the next one. Find the value of t squared minus 4t when t is 3. Work step by step. t squared is 9 minus 4 lots of 3 means we've got 9 minus 12, which means we've got the answer minus 3. Check you understand each part of that. This time, we've got to find p squared minus 3p when p is minus 4. So we're doing minus 4 squared minus 3 lots of minus 4. Now that comes out as, well, minus 4 squared is a negative times a negative, so it's a positive 16. And this one comes out as positive because it's minus 3 times minus 4, which is plus 12. So you get 16 plus 12, 28. Number 4. Same idea, except we've got to be careful using negative numbers just like before. We're going to do minus 2 all squared minus 5 lots of minus 2. So minus 2 squared is plus 4, negative times a negative, and this is also going to be a positive because you've got negative times a negative plus 10. 
So you get the answer 14. B, this time we've got fraction. So same idea, put the thing you want in brackets. Let you work out, self work out what's going on. A half times a half is a quarter. And then this time you're taking 5 times a half, which is minus 2.5. So we've got 0 0.25 and we're minusing 2.5. So that comes out as minus 2.25. Check you can do this without a calculator. Check you understand what I've done step by step. And the last question. This one now we're looking at writing our own formula from this information. By 9 first class stamps at 30p and M second class at 22p. Write a total formula, a formula for the total cost. Well, if you're doing n first class stamps, you've got n times 30, which means you've got that's the cost for the first class stamps, and then the cost for the second class stamps is 22m, m lots of 22p. That's your formula. Quite straightforward. If you buy first five first class stamps, well, five first class stamps means uh, what do you need to do? Five first class stamps means you're doing five lots of 30p, which means that's one pound fifty or 150 pence. Okay, so if we use our formula, we find out that 326p, three pounds 26, is 150p, the cost of the first class stamps, plus 22m. Okay, well. It might be better to write that without the pence. Let's just write it just the numbers, because otherwise we'll get confused. So it's going to be 326 is equal to what we worked out, 150 plus 22m. So we've got to do is solve this equation now. So we're going to take 150 away from 326. And that leaves us with 176. Must be the cost of the second class stamps. But each second class stamp costs 22 pence. So we're now going to divide by 22 and find out that there must be eight second class stamps. So M is eight, so it must be eight second class stamps. Okay. I think it's probably worth going back and looking at some of these questions because there's a few little tricky bits, especially with the method of trial and improvement, the first few questions. So please go back and watch that again.